you from Colombia? Yes, I am. Which part? Bogota. But I've been all over. I mean, you can't. You know, Uribe has a 80% favorability rating, right? In Bogota, yeah. No, not in Bogota, in Colombia. Well, I'm imagining they're probably not interviewing campesinos. And they are. Going out into the Congo and Africa. They are, and I did a lot of that. Did you talk about that? Yeah, there's just the regions. See, the Colombian situation is that before Uribe came to power, there was a, an absence of power. That we had a governance issue, and uh, the de facto rule exactly. The de facto rulers were in some regions paramilitaries, in some regions they were guerrillas. So it depends on what region you go to to talk about it. You, you're going to get very different answers. So why would that be? Because some regions used to belong to paramilitaries, other re re um, regions used to belong to FARC. I mean, there's a lot of oil companies in Colombia. The struggle used to be rich versus poor, it's not anymore. I mean, if you go back to the 60s, there was a Marxist revolution. Yeah, you can, you, okay, let's call it that, but the war isn't about that anymore. It is not. And what is it about? It's about drugs. Profit money. Profit money, exactly. But the profit is being made by FARC. FARC, FARC are drug de is a drug dealing organization. No, he's not. She's not. There's no evidence of that. If there was evidence of that, there's evidence of FARC. If it was true, if there was actual evidence of Uribe, that's not true. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, you can't blame all the problems in Colombia on Alvaro Uribe. I mean, what he did and what I witnessed living there, and the difference of Colombia 10 years from now to Colombia now is just a miracle in terms of any any in your experience. no in any development indicator it, it, it's a miracle numbers is one thing reality is another true there is a war and some people get hurt in the war Southern yeah, I've been. No, I cannot. I cannot. But you cannot speak for all of Colombians either. I mean, it's a complicated situation. Okay, I was in a. They were not displaced by Uribe. Their lives are not safer. Their lives are not better now. They were not displaced by Uribe. I, why is my life better? <laughs> How, you don't know me. You have privilege. You weren't targeted for displacement. True. But they were displaced before Uribe. When were they displaced? They were displaced by Uribe. No, they weren't. Where do you get this information? Where do you get these this? Two point four million what? These are facts. No, these are not facts. They were displaced. Two point four million. There were no displaced people. There were yeah, but how many? How many were displaced before? Look at kidnapping. Look at assassination. Look at murder rates in Colombia. No, it's a civil war. You said it yourself. It's a civil war. People get displaced. Uribe, there is no institutional policy to displace people. It's what happens when you fight a war. Because people get scared and they leave war regions. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. I'm not saying it's okay. But there are government uh, and Uribe made big progress in alleviating the suffering of displaced victims. There's just too many of them. To actually give you an example, there is a law going on right now that was proposed by Uribe's party, by the Partido de la U, that is about, it's a little bit extreme in, in, in my opinion because it's, it, there's just no funding to compensate all the victims of all the violence, but that's what they're saying. If you're a victim of violence in Colombia, you will be monetarily compensated. I mean, there, there's, I don't know because there's not enough money in the world. There is also a land, have you heard about the land law? No, but have you heard about the land law? The other, there are two big proposals right now from Uribe's party that's still in Colombia. One of them is called the Ley de Tierras that is talking about giving the land back to the displaced people. Now the problem with that is that a lot of people in Colombia have been displaced to the ages. They they have violence in one region, so they go to another place, and the people who have violence or violence comes to them. Yeah. 
sorry, violence comes to them, so they move somewhere else, right? They are displaced. But then from the place that they left, other people uh, stayed there for some reason. Maybe they were the violent ones that displaced them, maybe not, I don't know. But then, I mean, this has been in Colombia's history since practically independence, right? So who is a rightful owner of a certain uh, uh, parcel of land? It's, it's very difficult because a lot of displaced people, people who have been displaced, that come back and say, this is my land and I was displaced from it, right? So it's just a difficult situation. You can't deal with displaced victims. It's not easy, all right? The Colombian government is trying. They're pushing this really ambitious law that might, you know, make the Colombian government go bankrupt because there's no mo not enough money in the world to um, to to pay uh, people for their family members being killed in the war, things like that. But they're trying. But would you say that a better solution would be to give them land and resources? That's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to do. But it's difficult to figure out who is the rightful owner of a certain piece of land. It's very difficult. Sure, I think we're just here because we're all Georgetown undergrads who are so passionate about welcoming Alva Uribe to our community and the perspective that we all have, myself especially, is that uh, whether or not you agree or disagree with what President Uribe represents or has accomplished, he certainly is more than welcome in this university community because we deserve to be exposed to this exchange of ideas. Well, a lot of people have brought up a lot of criticisms over his presidency, and I think that, uh, for example, he came to my government class on Monday, and he stood before us, and he said, let me hear what your criticisms are, and let me respond to them, and that, to me, really enriched my academic and intellectual experience. So, I think an opportunity like that, where people can welcome him, but can also challenge him and what he has to say, is what being at Georgetown's all about, and that's why I'm so thrilled to be a student here, and especially I'm so thrilled to welcome him to our community. Why, why Columbia? I'm a Latin American studies major, and um, I, Colombia is a particular passion of mine. I'm planning on um, studying abroad in Colombia next year, and it's, I think, a fascinating country, and it's a country that's so dynamic and so vivacious today because of the last eight years that we've had of President Uribe restoring democracy and, and real economic development in Colombia. So some of the, some of the stations that are set up here focus on forced displacement, sure. or military violence, Absolutely. political repression by the state. Um, you know, like one of the facts is 4.4 and a half million displaced, 2.4 million under rebase. Right. So what do you have to say about that? You think these facts are... Well, it's not, you know, I, I think that facts are, facts have been lobbied on, on different sides of the debate and we've heard a lot of different things from different perspectives. What I can tell you is that millions of Colombians after in the course of the presidency of Alvaro Uribe were raised out of poverty. Millions of Colombians had access to resources, to educational resources, to democratic institutions. We saw political participation of the Colombian people skyrocket in the most recent elections, and I think that's a testament to him really instilling a value for democracy. Alvaro Uribe would be the first person to admit that abuses of human rights and tra real tragedies occurred in the course of his presidency. He did so on Monday. I looked him in the eyes as he was telling us that those things did happen and they were tragedies. For the people who did commit those abuses. Uh, well, I met him. But very enthusiastic. I am very enthusiastic. I, I love the guy. I. And what he is. It does. It, it you know it doesn't. I think it's. I think it. It represents a challenge. It represents a challenge for Colombia, and I think that he's one of the people. It is a challenge. That sounds like a crisis. You know, I'm. I'm questioning the objectivity of this interview, but nonetheless, I. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I... I'm completely against the, the forces, please. Sure, sure, sure. And I think that's a tragedy, and I think we have to work towards ameliorating that situation. You know, any people suffering... What would be your prognosis there? Like, what would be my prognosis? Continued investment in infrastructure, continued investment in education, investment in economic development, and security. For the years before Alvaro Uribe assumed the presidency, the Colombian people woke up every morning in fear, in terror. And that's no longer the case. Many woke up dead the next day, or didn't wake up. Terrorists, I agree. Terrorist groups and FARC people did wake up dead. And thank God the FARC woke up dead. He did. He did, which is why he's led one of the most successful and comprehensive campaigns to demobilize the paramilitary groups across Colombia. You've been trained very well. I actually haven't been trained. I've just uh, exposed myself to objective information. What is your major? My major is Latin American Studies. Okay.